If you think about Bitcoin, it's only 13 years old. Now, 13 years is pretty young. Um, things get adopted usually. It takes about 30 years for humans to adopt. Now, if you think about email, everyone assumes that the email started in the 90s, but it actually was started in the 70s. I remember a time when I would send an email, I would have to wait and I would get a read receipt. Um, who remembers the read receipt? That's, we would think it's kind of, now we laugh about it, like it's gonna get there. But at one point we thought, you know, I remember calling up a dial up and asking my friend, hey, did you get my email? How, how stupid is that? That's how long it takes. So right now, you think about it, it's 13 years old. These kids, in three to three years, five years, they'll be graduating high school. Some will be going on to college. Some will be starting their businesses right away. And this is what they want to start. Because this is all they know. This is what they're used to. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Richard Lee. Um, people know me in my industry as Crypto Painter. And I'm the CEO and co-founder of Art in Motion Lab. This right here on the right is my LinkedIn page. And for me, um, I'm an introvert. And there's a lot of INFJs and a lot of introverts out there. And I kind of don't like my face being out there. Um, I think some people here could probably relate. And so I hide behind the PFP. Um, I think you guys, everyone knows maybe Mike Tyson. Um, he's pretty world famous. I think he's recognizable. Uh, my background is from the video game industry. Um, I started off in the video game industry for about uh, three years before I went to the film industry. Uh, I spent 12 years in the film industry working on movies that you guys probably could recognize, such as like Spider-Man or Game of Thrones or The Mandalorian. Um, I'm actually wearing Star Wars socks right now. So for me, um, this is just us, and there's a lot of us. And just like the internet, um, it's slowly being adopted. Um, I'm going to try to break this session down into three simple sections. Um, I don't know if you guys all know about digital assets. So hopefully, when you guys leave this room, you guys will learn something, hopefully. If I didn't, then I didn't do a good job. So digital identity, um, that's a really big one. So I have my PFP up here. This is what everyone in the industry knows me as. This is my monkey. Um, it's part of a club called the Board Yacht Club. It's the number one NFT club in the world. It has a, it has a seed round, raised a seed round, which was record breaking last year. Um, their valuation was four billion for a seed round. So that's pretty crazy. Um, I got a lot of pushback for trying to put this monkey up here in, in front of all these great looking people, but that's just me. Um, now, there's celebrities in this club. Um, if you think about celebrities, they're all about identity. They know how to brand themselves. And if you think about how world-class they are and recognizable, why would they still replace their face with a, a JPEG? To them, they understand the adoption, but more importantly, again, the digital world is starting to become more mashed up with the real world. How many, how many of you guys spend time on your phones? I'm sure that if you guys have kids or you go to restaurants, you see children getting a free babysitter through an app or a video game. It's quite often. So same thing. Um, they are doing the same thing. Stephen Curry, I remember when he first joined, it was a big deal because he was the first NBA superstar to join the club. Tom Brady, he's the GOAT. I think he has seven rings. Um, I don't know why he picked that one, but there's a reason, and everyone has a different reason. For me, my monkey, I picked it because I kind of look clean cut, but this monkey looked really messy. I want to throw people off. A lot of people out there sometimes want to be pseudo-anonymous. I think someone that is the most famous pseudo-anonymous person is probably the artist Banksy. Uh, Banksy, no one knows his face, but he's probably arguably the best living artist right now. And he hides behind it. And if there was a PFP when he first started, I'm sure he'd probably rock one. There's Neymar. He loves his ape. He wears it. He puts his clothes on it. He's always promoting it. This is his identity. We're born the way we look. Maybe we can change our clothes. Maybe we can change our hairstyle. But that's it. We can't really express ourselves. So there's reasons why he picked 
the, the party one. He, he loves partying. Um, he has a good time. Serena Williams has a very unique one. It's pink. Um, she, this club, all the monkeys, they're only guys. There is no female traits. There's a few female traits, but for her, she went with the pink monkey because it represents females for her. Everyone know here is Snoop Dogg and Eminem. They even made a music video and they use her characters instead of themselves. This was pretty big. Um, it, it, was, it, made, it made waves. You would think they're famous. Why would they not use their faces? But why not? This is, they feel more comfortable hiding behind it. Snoop Dogg actually made his entire uh, ape into multi-businesses. So for example, he has a, a marijuana strain. So do I. I have a crypto gelato. This is something I started in the beginning. And then his son was actually the second one to join, and then Snoop Dogg joined. Um, he actually took it in a, a different level, and he actually has a thing called Dr. Bombay, which is an uh, ice cream line. So when you smoke weed, you usually have munchies. So his whole thing was when you smoke weed, now you can eat ice cream. So he's really trying to take the ecosystem. Eminem, he's more of a very quiet person, but I don't know if everyone here is Eminem fans, but he's really famous for that hat. And somehow he was able to pay almost $300,000 for this hat. The, the, the monkey that I'm using, the gold one that you saw on my LinkedIn page, I paid $150,000 for that. You guys might think I'm crazy for that, but to me, it's my identity. Um, you can't put a value on that. For, for my main monkey, which is the crazy white one, that's something where I turned down a million dollars for it, and I actually bought it for $200 two years ago. And they still turned it down because for me, I'm building a brand, I'm building my identity out of it. Most importantly, I can hide behind it. So let me go to the rise of digital assets. Um, this is where adoption and most importantly, um, where we come in, um, users. So if you think about luxury brands, they know branding and identity the most. And if you, it's, not, it's no surprise that they were the first ones to jump in. Um, they identified that they could make this a big thing long term. Um, Burberry, uh, Louis Vuitton, they enter the space. Um, they're doing it very slow. They don't want to look like it's a cash grab, but it's coming. It's slowly coming because people want this experience, this digital experience. Now when you think about actual things in real life, such as like maybe a bag, how do, you, how do you guys know if it's real? You don't. Like, I know I don't carry bags, but if I look at maybe the Louis Vuitton bag over here, the print looks like Louis Vuitton, so I think it's real, but I don't know if it's real. But now with blockchain, you can authenticate things. Um, one thing that you can authenticate, you guys all know baseball cards, right? This is very old. It's a big thing. Um, I collect baseball cards. It's a Shohei Otani rookie card, and I've been collecting it as an investment. But sometimes I don't know if it's real, so I have to send it to PSA to get it authenticated. Um, to me, this is very old, the way you authenticate things. And the blockchain, you can definitely know if it's real or not, because it's on chain. You can see the whole history. You can see who made it, where it traded, where it's selling, where it's buying. And there's a whole entire market. So this is something cool, and I think it's, it's going to evolve to everything in the world. This is going to be started the biggest, probably the biggest asset class, I think, because Think about it. I'm sure some people here drink wine. Wine is something that's very, very, very faked out. And you can't, you don't know, like to me, if it tastes good, it tastes good. You don't know if it's a $1,000 authentic bottle. It could just be a good $100 bottle in a $1,000 bottle. So with that, you can now have blockchain that can verify things. Um, everything will be like this. Tag here, um, they're taking actually one more step. So with Tiffany, um, they actually started selling their goods and they're actually now putting people's PFPs and their identity onto their merchandise. So now you have your own PFP, your own identity marked in. So like, when you see someone's watch, think about it, if, you, if you're not gonna pretend that you're someone else, especially a, a monkey, it just doesn't work that way. You might just wear a watch and that's it, but this is more personable. And the more that this digital world becomes more um, into this real world and it starts getting mashed up, then it gets blurred. And when it gets blurred, um, I guarantee you, you guys don't know this, but if you think about it really hard, you guys probably spend more time in the digital world than the real world. 
I see some of you guys on your phones right now. You're still in the digital world but in your phone, even though you're sitting here in this real space. Now for the younger generation, they grew up on the pad, on the iPad or gaming. So they only know the digital world. If you think about Bitcoin, it's only 13 years old. Now, 13 years is pretty young. Um, things get adopted usually. It takes about 30 years for humans to adopt. Now, if you think about email, everyone assumes that the email started in the 90s, but it actually was started in the 70s. I remember a time when I would send an email, I would have to wait and I would get a read receipt. Um, who remembers the read receipt? That's, we would think it's kind of, now we laugh about it, like it's gonna get there. But at one point we thought, you know, I remember calling up a dial-up and asking my friend, hey, did you get my email? How, how stupid is that? That's how long it takes. So right now, you think about it, it's 13 years old. These kids, in three to three years, five years, they'll be graduating high school. Some will be going on to college. Some will be starting their businesses right away. And this is what they want to start because this is all they know. This is what they're used to. Some music videos, um, Bieber. Bieber's a really funny guy. Um, he, so we call this a basic ape. Um, this is a floor ape, so it's usually a cheap ape. Um, the more beautiful they look, the more rare it is, the more price it usually goes on the secondary market. Now this guy, he, he overpaid for his ape. Um, a lot of people didn't know why. Um, but to him, he paid 500 ETH. Um, at the time, he, he paid around $2 million for it. Right now, it's, the market has gone down, and uh, it's probably worth a couple hundred thousand only. Um, but he didn't sell it. It's still, it's still his identity. He's, we're not thinking about the money or the value part. But most importantly, a lot of the apes, we all asked him, why did you buy this? Why did you overpay and pay almost $2 million for this? His answer was 3001. That's his address. That's his home. Um, he lives on the street, and his, his address is 3001. So he connected with that number. That's the reason why he bought his. Everyone has different reasons why they're hiding behind the PFP. Tokenization. I think many of you guys might be hearing this word a lot these days. Um, yeah, that's, that's $16 trillion in tokenization. That's pretty big, $16 trillion. Everything in this world will be tokenized. It's for things to be authenticated, um, most importantly, I'm going to use real estate for an example because I think everyone here can understand and relate to real estate the most. Real estate will be tokenized. Now you can see this on the, who here has bought a house or a condo or anything? How many papers do you have to sign in escrow? Well, now with smart contract, all that is automated. So I'm sorry if someone here in here owns an escrow company. You might become blockbuster in five years. You might be bankrupt, so you might have to look for something else. But literally, this is where it goes. So real estate is huge. It's a big market. Um, no one even knows how much the real estate market is. Now, if you tokenize all that, if you go to the bank right now, you literally have to, if you own and you're paying mortgage to a bank, you literally have to borrow your own money, your own down, down payment money and the bank charges you interest for it. Now, if you tokenize it, you can unlock that capital. So something unique happened about two weeks ago. I'm not sure if you guys know the luxury brand Supreme. So there was someone who out there, no one knows who he is. We just know it's wallet, it's a random person. Christie's actually valued his Supreme collection at two and a half million dollars. So now he tokenized all that asset and made it into a smart contract. And now someone actually gave him, he took that as collateral and he got a, he got a one and a half million dollar loan for it. That's something that's not possible in this real world. But in the token, tokenized world, you can do it because now you get just verification on the blockchain. There's provenance. It's gonna get bigger and bigger. 13% 13, 13 is, uh, is the research annually, year by year. And once the flywheel opens, it's going to take off. I, I, I know Wall Street's ready for it. BlackRock's definitely ready for it. I know Larry Fink's a huge fan of it. The metaverse. This is a project that my friend is doing, and it's, he's actually partnered up with the official Dubai Space Station. Um, the, the, the prince over there, his, his mandate is for 
is for them to go to Mars and have a colony. It's probably not going to happen in our lifetime. So they simulated. And to people that are Elon Musk fans or SpaceX fans, they're going to live this world. And so they want to experience it before they die because they know we're not going to make it till then. But it's pretty cool to see it. So like, there's, if you look at the, the view, it's really tied to the actual view of the satellite up there. So it's real time. And people customize it to live to however they want. If you guys don't really believe, you guys might believe this time. When the internet was coming out, people thought we were crazy. People thought it was a fad. People thought it's going to go away. It's a bubble. This is what people thought last year of us. Now luxury brands are here. It's no longer a bubble. We're here to stay, and we're here to grow. And we want to grow with you. So revenue. Um, this is where the cool part is. If you think about brands like Mickey Mouse, it's owned by Disney. So Disney makes all the money. But you've seen up the slides before. All these characters, these digital identities, they're owned by an individual, and now they're able to make that money. That's pretty cool. Gaming is, is probably the biggest in this world because it's the gamers, it's, this world combines, it's very mixed together. Gaming is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, dig, virtual assets, digital assets are getting bigger. In-game currency, um, people, like in, kids play Fortnite, um, they buy skins. They, there's, there's kids out there that buy a game for free. I mean, they download the game for free and they play and they play them up get accessories, get cool guns or whatever, and then guess what happens? They sell it to someone who's lazy, who has money. They don't want to put in the time. So there's actually like an ecosystem from this as well. And there's secondary sales. It's pretty cool. And the amazing part is there's royalties. It's getting bigger and bigger with virtual goods. That's why you see Gucci and Louis Vuitton coming in. Virtual goods. Again, this world is becoming very blurred with this real world. Blockchain gaming. Um, this is slowly picking up. It's getting bigger and bigger. Um, this is where it gets really unique because now there is actually in-game currency, real money. And people can wager, they can bet, they can uh, fight for each other, and most importantly, they can earn. It's pretty cool to think about you're just playing a game. In my day, you play a game, and then you maybe have to trade it in and you get like maybe five bucks for the game that you spent $60 for. But now people can resell that game they can resell parts of that game. They can resell their character. They might resell their skin, their gun. Gambling, that is a big one in their industry. Um, it goes hand in hand. Literally, crypto people love gambling. It's, I, feel, I, I, I can see why, because we're gambling on these, and we're taking these big bets and making these businesses while everyone's still doubting us. So the trend's going up, and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Online gambling, it's getting bigger. Um, there's casinos, there's lotteries, there's sports betting. Now there's competitive game, esports. Korea is a big one. Imagine when there's no longer purses. You're not paying for just the way purses work. You might have to get sponsors. You might have to raise money. But now there's a whole entire ecosystem. You don't have to put up money because there's already money in the system. Crypto ownership. Um, it looks like everyone here is younger than I thought would be, so think in this. Um, right now, boomers and Gen X, they don't understand it. But if you look at the graph up here, you can understand why. Millennials, I'm a millennial. Zoomers, Gen Zs, aka Zoomers, we hold a lot of crypto. Um, this is a system that we trust. A lot of us lost faith in the traditional banking system. Um, it's hard for someone, especially a migrant worker, to make money. How is it fair for migrant workers? Some family in the Philippines is living in maybe Dubai, and $200 is a, this normal household income in the Philippines. They're sending back that $200, and the bank takes $20 of that. If you do it through crypto, they'll get it instantly. You don't have to wait a week. They get it instantly, and it'll cost them less, to, less than a dollar, $19. They save that much money. That's a, that's a big deal to them. So this is very important, especially for migrant workers. This is something we're making. Um, poker app, gambling, poker, crypto, all of it combined. But most importantly, you see these characters? These are people's digital identity that they actually licensed out to us. They're actually making royalties from this revenue because it's no longer something that we own. We all are in it together. So this is pretty cool because you're gonna see more of this. You're gonna see more digital coming combining in the world. 
This is another thing that we made. These are two concept paintings that I made. So to me, this is very exciting. These characters, again, owned by someone individual. They're not owned by the video game company or the developer or the publisher. They're individually owned by someone out there. And if this video game does well, they get passive income. Isn't that crazy? I, I love that. So that's a teaser that we last launched last year. And for us, all these characters are individually owned by other people, someone out there around the world. There's actually someone that is actually 16 years old that owns one of these. And now that 16 year old is gonna be making passive income from this game, because they, they own the IP. Um, so I just wanna say thank you. And I got one more cool video that we wanna debut here. And this will show you all these different characters from this game and they're all individually owned by someone out there, not the company, not the publisher, that the incumbents. So things will get decentralized. Things will become more fair. So this is all owned by individuals out there, and it's, things are going to be decentralized. So we're making a big bet on it. So appreciate you guys, and thank you for your time.